Here's a pizza. It has eight slices. Imagine that you eat one slice of pizza. How many slices do you have left? Well, obviously seven. But how do we express that as a fraction? Well, there were eight pieces of pizza. You ate one, and now there are seven. So we could say that there is now seven-eighths of the pizza remaining. That is, there are seven pieces of eight remaining. With fractions, we call the top number the numerator, and the bottom number the denominator. Just say you eat one more slice of delicious pizza. Obviously, now you have six pieces of pizza remaining, or six-eighths. However, we could simplify that fraction and say that there is now three-quarters of the pizza remaining. That is, six-eighths equals three-quarters. They're essentially the same thing. But how do we do that mathematically? How do we simplify fractions? Let's take a look. Here are some fractions that we can simplify. Simplifying is basically reducing a fraction down to its lowest terms. Simplifying does not change the value of the fraction. The result will be an equivalent fraction. To do this, we just need to divide the numerator and the denominator by the same whole number, the largest whole number that we can. So for the first one, 4 over 8, or 4 eighths, we can divide top and bottom by 4, giving us 1 over 2, or 1 half. That is, if we have 4 pieces of pizza remaining of our 8 slice pizza, we have half the pizza remaining. It makes sense, right? With the second one, 4 over 6, or 4 6, we can divide top and bottom by 2. We can't divide by 4, as 4 does not go into 6 evenly. So dividing by 2 gives us 2 over 3, or 2 thirds. 4 sixths is the same as 2 thirds. For the third fraction, 12 over 12, we can divide both top and bottom by 12, which gives us 1 over 1. 1 divided by 1 is just 1, right? That is, if we have a 12-slice pizza, and 12 slices remain, we have exactly one pizza left. And for the last one, 9 over 15. Can you see that both the top and bottom can be evenly divided by 3? That will give us 3 over 5, or 3 fifths. 9 fifteenths is the same as 3 fifths. All of these, with the exception of 12 over 12, are what we call proper fractions. A proper fraction is one that's value is less than 1. That is, the numerator is less than the denominator. What about improper fractions, ones where the numerator is greater than the denominator? Well, if we want to, we can turn improper fractions into so-called mixed fractions. For example, 3 over 2 is the same as 1 and a half. Just as a note, there's nothing wrong with using improper fractions. Mathematically speaking, they're just as valid as a mixed fraction. But in real life, people typically don't go around saying, I just ate three halves of a pizza. They would normally say, I just ate one and a half pizzas. So mixed fractions are easier to understand in real-life situations. So how do we convert improper fractions into mixed fractions? Well, we just need to divide the numerator by the denominator, write the whole number out the front, and then put the remainder on top of the denominator. So for example, 7 over 4. How many times does 4 go into 7? just once, with a remainder of 3, right? So we write down the 1 first, and then we write down the remainder 3 over the top of the denominator 4. 1 and 3 quarters is the same as 7 quarters, or 7 on 4. Next, we have 13 over 6. How many times does 6 go into 13? twice, with a remainder of 1. We write down 2 in front, and put the remainder of 1 on top of the 6, to give us 2 and 1 sixth. 13 sixths equals 2 and 1 sixth. For the last one, we have 17 over 5. How many times does 5 go into 17? 3 times, with a remainder of 2. So the resulting mixed fraction will be 3 and 2 fifths. 3 and 2 fifths is the same as 17 fifths. 
What if we want to convert the other way? What if we want to convert a mixed fraction to an improper fraction? To do this, we need to multiply the whole number by the denominator, add the numerator, and then write the result on top of the denominator. So for the first problem here, 5 and a half, we multiply 5 by 2 to get 10, and then add the numerator 1 to get 11. And then all we have to do is put that on top of the denominator 2 to get 11 over 2. 11 over 2 is the same thing as 5 and a half. For the second one, 3 and 5 sixths, we just multiply 3 by 6 to get 18, add 5 to get 23. So the final result will be 23 over 6. 23 sixths has the same value as 3 and 5 sixths. Okay, so what about adding fractions together? The only rule that we have to remember when adding fractions is that the denominators must be the same. So for the first one, 1 quarter plus 2 quarters, we can see that the denominator 4 is the same. All we have to do is add the numerators together and keep the same denominator. So 1 quarter plus 2 quarters equals 3 quarters. Simple, right? What about 3 quarters plus 3 eighths? Well, we can't add them together yet because their denominators are different. But we can change 3 quarters so that its denominator becomes 8. If we multiply both top and bottom by 2, we get 6 eighths. 6 over 8 plus 3 over 8 is a lot easier to work with. All we have to do is add 6 plus 3 to get 9 eighths. This is an improper fraction, so we can convert it to a mixed fraction. How many times does 8 go into 9? Just once, with a remainder of 1. So the final answer is 1 and 1 eighth. 3 quarters plus 3 eighths equals 1 and 1 eighth. Subtracting fractions is very similar to adding them. Again, we need to make sure that we have the same denominators. So for the first one, 5 elevenths minus 3 elevenths, we can just subtract 5 minus 3 to get 2. We keep the same denominator, so our final answer is 2 elevenths. For the second one, 7 tenths minus 1 half, we need to convert the half to have the same denominator as the 7 tenths. To do that, we just multiply top and bottom by 5 to get 5 tenths. 5 tenths is the same as 1 half. Now we can simply subtract 7 minus 5 to get 2. We keep the same denominator 10 to end up with 2 tenths. We can simplify this by dividing top and bottom by 2 to get 1 fifth. 7 tenths minus 1 half equals 1 fifth. How about multiplying fractions? Multiplying fractions is fairly straightforward. You don't even have to have the same denominator. All you have to do is multiply the top by the top and the bottom by the bottom to get the final result. So for 2 thirds times 1 seventh, we just multiply the numerators together 2 times 1, and the denominators together, 3 times 7, to get our final answer, 2 over 21. We can't simplify that any further, so that's our final answer. For the second problem, 5 eighths times 2 fifths, we multiply the top by the top, 5 by 2, and then the bottom by the bottom, 8 times 5, to get 10 over 40. We can simplify that further by dividing both top and bottom by 10 to get our final answer, 1 over 4. So 5 eighths times 2 fifths equals 1 quarter. Dividing fractions is a little bit trickier, but not too much so. Let's use the same fractions as we did before. When dividing fractions, we first have to find the reciprocal of the second fraction. That is, we just have to turn the second fraction upside down. But instead of dividing now, we have to multiply. So for the first problem, 2 thirds divided by 1 seventh, we need to find the reciprocal of 1 seventh. That is, we need to turn the 1 seventh upside down to get 7 over 1. And because we did that, we also have to change the divide sign to a multiply. This makes it a much easier calculation. Now we can just multiply top by top and bottom by bottom. So 2 times 7 over 3 times 1. 
That gives us 14 over 3, which if you like, you can change into a mixed fraction. 3 goes into 14 four times, with a remainder of 2, giving us 4 and 2 thirds. 2 thirds divided by 1 seventh equals 4 and 2 thirds. For the second problem, 5 eighths divided by 2 fifths, you first need to find the reciprocal of 2 fifths, so 5 over 2, and change the divide sign to a multiply. Multiply top by top and bottom by bottom, so 5 times 5 over 8 times 2 gives us 25 over 16. Changing that to a mixed fraction, we get 1 and 9 sixteenths. 5 eighths divided by 2 fifths equals 1 and 9 sixteenths. There is another way we can divide fractions. Let's use the same problem again. 5 eighths divided by 2 fifths. If we can get both fractions to have the same denominators, then we can divide them. So if we multiply the top and bottom of the first fraction by 5, and then the top and bottom of the second fraction by 8, we'll get a common denominator of 40. Now we can just divide the numerators to get 25 over 16, which equals 1 and 9 sixteenths, as before. Anyway, that's fractions in a nutshell. Feel free to leave any questions for me below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Cheers!